This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Sturgill. I'm 23 years old. I live in a small town outside of Charleston, West Virginia. It's a country town. I did a lot with boxing and wrestling. I fell in love with boxing. And I went to college, you know, and I liked nursing because I wanted to help people, you know. I wanted to be an RN. But I didn't apply that to helping other people. I just applied what I learned from medical school and everything to my job now as a, an addict. I'm addicted to alcohol. Xanax and sleeping pills, crack cocaine, heroin. I was a junkie. And then I found out about this methadone clinic. Yeah, the methadone, I was supposed to taper up to where I felt good, normal, but I tapered up to where I could get high. Sturgill, you will get up, go to the clinic. If Sturgill didn't have that methadone, he's going to go back to heroin. Sturgill married to the methadone clinic, is what I call it. It's every day. It's the same routine. He wakes up to get high, goes to sleep. He wakes up and gets high. When he gets to drinking, it intensifies the effect of the methadone. Down that far, I'll have this bottle done within the hour. The methadone, all of it together, it can slow the breathing down. They go in respiratory rest, then they go into cardiac arrest, and they just die. How am I going to die by drinking a pint of whiskey? I had everything I, I almost ever wanted in my life, but the drugs still got to me. Sturgill was a pure joy as a baby. He was so unique. He was a happy baby. Always had smiling, giggling, playing. He was always a good kid. After Sturgill was born, we noticed his eyes moving side to side. So I took him to his doctor, and he was diagnosed with congenital sensory nystagmus. A lot of worry came along when we found out he had nystagmus because we knew he was going to have some issues. At three months old, they put glasses on him. I was basically legally blind until I was in fourth grade. I started taking him to vision therapy, and that helped a lot. I wanted him to feel as normal as possible. He got large print books in school, and he's a very quick learner. He's just very intelligent. I mean, he's a smart person. In elementary school, I watched a movie about this dude. He was completely blind, no, no vision at all. And he learned how to wrestle, and he'd become a champion. He went on to the Olympics. They started wrestling at the Pee Wee tournaments and stuff. From then on, Sturgill excelled really well because of his lack of vision. Well, I learned how to wrestle almost blind, just by the feel of it, just by the instinct, like it was second nature. Just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> He went out on the mat. It was fun to watch. He loved doing it. Sturgill won first place in the Nationals, and he, he was so proud. After that, Sturgill went to a qualifying event in Ohio. I was beating him in points by like six, seven points. I knew I was going to win. I was showboating. And man, he caught me with a hook. And all of my pressure went boom down on my arm, and he landed on top of me. And my elbow joint went pow. Blew it out of my arm, and a bone came out of my arm. When Sturgill broke his arm in that match, it was a turning point in his life. It changed his life forever. Sturgill was 16 when he had surgery. He went through about a year of therapy, but it was not helping. I had to wear these big braces that crank, 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 crank and turn my wrist left and right and stuff. So the more I worked it out, the better it got. And boxing, boom, boom, boom. It really helped my arm out. Sturgill started boxing basically for the arm therapy. He loved it, and he did really well. My brother never lost a match. He won the Golden Gloves in Ohio. He was the main event for the WVU boxing tournament. Sturgill was a stud. I mean, he was just pure adrenaline. Yeah. I went and trained down in Colorado Springs where the Olympic boxing team trains. There was a coach there that said Sturgill was Olympic potential. He would take Sturgill to the Olympic trials. But boxing was great. It really stretched my arm out. But at the end of each match or whatever, it'd be sore. I'd have to take him some pills, you know? And basically, the more exercise I did with it, the better it got. But the more it hurt and stuff, the more pills I took to compensate for the pain. And that's when I got prescribed the big pills, the oxycodone. 
It just kept escalating and just, he'd take more and more and more. More, I didn't know what I was doing to myself. I didn't know the road that I was going down. My mom and dad thought, okay, the doctor gave it to him. He's fine. I thought I was fine until I ran out. When my brother would go to the doctors, he would just cheat him out and he would have excuses just to get more pills. I knew he had a problem, but I was hoping he would be able to, it just was a phase or something. My parents were in denial of it. I don't think that they realized how addictive opioids were. I was taking the oxycodones, three, four of them, chew them up and snort one or two, and just kept on snowballing. And I think when he really got strung out on the stuff is when he quit boxing. I could have been a professional boxer. About a year after the second surgery, he was a full-blown addict. By the time I graduated high school, I was completely addicted to oxycodone. I was like, well, I'll try college, because, you know, I'll try going to college. We were really excited when Sturgill started college. He started school in the medical field, trying to become a nurse. I really liked the science of the human body anyway, you know? I thought it was fascinating, and I've been around doctors all my life. So I figured, man, I would like to do that. I'd like to help people like they do, you know, like they help me out, you know? Sturger was really so, he was so passionate about helping other people. I think it was stressful because he couldn't stay focused. His addiction was in the way. I didn't have money every day to go buy the drugs that I wanted, so I'd feel ill. So I'd sleep in and miss my classes. He wasn't even going to school, so he just quit. He was two classes away from getting his associate's degree in applied science. That was disappointing. The place that he was working at, he got introduced to heroin by someone like his co-worker. Eventually he came to me and said, Mom, I need help. My parents took him to a methadone clinic, and then he started taking things on top of it to substitute the high. I kind of applied what I learned from medical school and everything, and learning about different compounds and pharmacology, really, and applied it to my drug use. I'm not working right now, because my license was suspended. And he's had two major wrecks from nodding out. They said it was like hitting a brick wall head on at 60 mile an hour. He's been arrested twice in the last six months. One time he had a gun pulled on him. He's almost caught his bed on fire, I don't know how many times. But he is about ready to burn my house down, nodding off with a cigarette in his mouth. He's got several scars in his collarbone area where he's fell asleep and the cigarettes dropped him burning. So I got several fire extinguishers sitting around in my home. He's got burnt holes in the sheets, the pillows, his clothes. Sturgill's addiction has changed the whole family. It's just destroying us. Yeah, you have money to buy with is why, because you damn sure don't bring it here at this house and give your mom no money to buy milk or to pay for your stuff. The only thing you buy is gasoline, cigarettes, and dope. And leave me the alone. You're going to either kill yourself or go to jail. Is that what you want? You two-faced piece of Who are you to tell me I can't drink some liquor? You used to drink. I wasn't on methadone. I wasn't taking prescription drugs. You want to get in an argument? No. OK, then shut the up. It irritates me when he's drunk and he's jibber-jabbering and disrespecting me. I don't like seeing him like that. OK, let's get us a drink of water. Sturgill's dad tries to tell him right, but Sturgill doesn't accept that. He has so much hurt and anger toward his dad. He, he basically, he's ashamed of me being addicted to drugs. He, he doesn't acknowledge me at all. But whenever I was boxing, fighting, you know, wrestling, damn it, I was his son, I was a champion. That's my boy, that's my boy, that's my boy. But other than that, no, nah. no. Nah. I was one of those people that said, well, my kid ever does that, I'm going to bust his rear end, or I'll tell him to hit the road. I ain't putting up with no heroin addict in my house. You can say that as long as you want to. Wait till it's your child and see what you do. You'd be surprised. Dear Sturgill, I'm here today trying to convince you to save your own life. I'm here today because I love you. I remember you wrestling and boxing. Those were great days. 
Your addiction has changed you. I have worried myself sick about you. All you have to do is say yes. This treatment center is one of the best in the United States. And the best gift you could ever give me would be for you to say yes to this opportunity for treatment. They are prepared to take good care of you, Sergeant. It's a big decision. I'll take good care of you, son. So you can get through this. I'm sure so you can. He has to do it now. We did everything humanly possible to help him. It's, he's definitely on his own now. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Love you. Took the sky, then a beast came and stole the light. feel great physically, working out, going to the gym, going to the beach, all this stuff. I've lost like 25 pounds being here. It's been a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> Mentally, it's, it, it's a little different. Mentally, you know, you'll still get triggers, still get cravings. But here they teach you how to work through them. It's like putting tools in your toolbox to use in the real world. It's amazing. It's, it's changed my life drastically. I am about to see my parents, and I, I'm really nervous. I really am, dude. I haven't seen him sober since I was 14. Look at you. It's really, really hard to put it all into one word. When I saw him, is it the light in his eyes was there as he was when he was a child. I love you, man. I love you, <laughs> Definitely, I'm gonna change my relationship with my father and my mother. <laughs> I don't know how to repay him, but damn it, I'm gonna try. I I'm gonna try to rebuild the relationship with my family that I always wanted. <laughs>